We've already paid a lot of attention to the molecular structure of DNA. In fact, he, right depicted in front of us, we have two strands of DNA forming a double helix. And we can look at the telltale signs that this is DNA. And in particular, we can look at the five carbon sugar on its backbone. We see, and let's actually number the carbons. This is one prime, two prime, three prime, four prime. Five prime, we can see on the two prime carbon we don't have an oxygen attached to it. We don't have a hydroxyl group attached to it. And because of that, we know that this is not ribose, this is deoxyribose. This right over here is deoxyribose. And these two are also deoxyribose. So that tells us that we have two strands of DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid. So let me write this down. This, this part of the chain. This is derived from a deoxyribose being attached to phosphate groups in a nitrogenous base. So deoxy, deoxy, deoxyribose. So what would we have to do if we wanted, instead of viewing this as, a double, as, as two strands of DNA in a double helix formation, what, how would we have to rearrange, how would we have to edit the left-hand strand if instead we wanted to imagine that the left-hand strand is, say, messenger RNA being, being generated during transcription with a single strand of DNA here on the right? Well, to turn this into RNA, or to make it look like RNA, on the two prime carbon, we, oh, we want to turn the, the deoxyribose into just ribose. So we would want to add, we would want to add a, a hydroxyl group right over here. So I add a hydroxyl group over there. Actually, let me do that. Do the hydrogens in white. So add one hydroxyl group there. And I want to do it on all the sugars on the left strand's backbone. If I want this to be a, a, a single strand of RNA, and RNA tends to be single stranded. So oxygen, and then a hydrogen. And so this hydroxyl, adding this hydroxyl group, instead of just having another hydrogen, just a hydrogen by itself over there, this tells us that this sugar is not, no longer deoxyribose. This is ribose. So now we have ribose. We now have ribose in our backbone, which is a telltale sign that, well, at least now we have the backbone of RNA, ribonucleic acid, versus DNA, deoxy ribonucleic acid. Now you might think we're done, but we're not quite done because the nitrogenous bases on RNA are slightly different than the nit nitrogenous bases on DNA. On DNA, on DNA, your nitrogenous bases are adenine, guanine, and adenine and guanine are the two ringed nitrogenous bases right over here. This is adenine, this is guanine. And you also have, you also have cytosine, cytosine. I'm gonna do these all in different colors. Cytosine and uric, uh, sorry, cytosine and thymine. I'm getting to the punchline too fast. And this right over here is cytosine, and this is thymine. And cytosine and thymine are single ringed nitrogenous bases. We call them pyrimidines, adenine and guanine. We call them purines. This is a little bit of review. In RNA. In RNA, you still have adenine, you still have guanine, you still have guanine, you still have cytosine, but instead of thymine, you have a very close relative of thymine, and that is and that is uracil. So the way that this is drawn right now, this nitrogenous base. Remember, when we started this video, it was, it was double-stranded DNA. This nitrogenous base right over here is thymine, and it bonds, it forms hydrogen bonds with adenine right over here. If I want to turn into uracil, I just have to get rid, I just have to get rid of this, this methyl group right over here. So if I just do this, if I just do this, and if I were to replace it with a hydrogen that is just implicitly bonded there, well, now I'm dealing with uracil. So now I'm dealing with uracil. So you see that uracil and thymine are very close molecules, or, or, or they're very similar nitrogenous bases, and that's why they can play a very similar role. And it's still the case. Instead, and, and, and so what uracil bond, what uracil pairs with, it pairs still with adenine, the same thing that thymine pairs with, and everything else is, of course, still the same. Now an interesting question, an interesting question is why uracil? Why not thymine? Or you could say why thymine? Why not uracil? 
And based on what I've read, it actually turns out that uracil uh, is, is a little bit more error prone. It might be able to bond with other things it, it, when, you're, when you're coding. It's a, it's a little bit less stable than thymine. And so uracil, uracil, uracil makes the RNA molecule, or actually makes the machinery of information transfer, it makes it less stable. It like makes, it's a less stable. I guess way to to transfer information. And based on what I've read in in, in evolutionary history, RNA molecules most people believe predate DNA molecules. And then when you so in the early stages you had a lot of change and so uracil molecules were just fine and there was a lot of errors and whatever else. But then once you had uh, I guess information needed to be a little bit more persistent and a little less error prone, well then thymine helped stabilize. Thymine helped stabilize things. There's also the view of well why has uracil still stuck around? Well, RNA molecules, they have all of these roles in cells. Messenger RNA molecules are taking information from the DNA and, and getting it transcribed at, at, or, or getting, it, getting it translated at the ribosome. But they shouldn't hang out forever. That you actually want them to be somewhat unstable. So it's an interesting question to think about. Why do we have uracil instead of thymine? Or why do we have thymine instead of uracil? But this is one of the telltale signs of that we are now dealing with a, an RNA molecule. So now what we have on the left left hand side now all of this business actually let me do this in a, let me do this in a different color all of this business this strand this strand right over here we can now the way it's drawn we can now consider this an RNA molecule and if we assume that this is happening during trans encryption when a DNA molecule where a single strand of DNA would want to replicate its information then this over here would be mRNA messenger messenger RNA and so what's going on here Well, let's think about it. This one, the way it's the the RNA, the messenger RNA, the way the messenger RNA, the way it's oriented, we have if we go, we have phosphate group, then we go to five prime carbon, four prime, three prime, then phosphate group, then five prime, four prime, three prime, then phosphate group. So this is oriented five prime on top, three prime on the bottom. While this DNA molecule is oriented the other way. This is a five prime carbon. This is a three prime carbon. So we have phosphate, three prime, five prime, phosphate. So we have three prime is on top, and five prime is on the bottom. So if we wanted to think about what's happening, maybe using the symbols for the nitrogenous bases, we could say, all right, we have our mRNA molecule here, and this is its five prime end, and this is its three prime end. And then the first nitro or the top nitrogenous base right over here, this is uracil. This is uracil. And then the second one over here, this is this or sorry, over here, this is cytosine. So this is cytosine. This is cytosine right over here. And this is being this is being transcribed from a DNA molecule, from this DNA molecule on the right hand side. So this is DNA. And this DNA has an anti-parallel orientation. It's parallel, but it's kind of flipped over. The, 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 the sugars are pointed in a different direction. So this is going from, this is the three prime end. This is the five prime end. And we see that the uracil is hydrogen bonded to adenine. Adenine, right over here. So adenine, and I'll draw dotted lines to show the hydrogen bonds. And that the cytosine is hydrogen bonded to guanine to guanine so this right over here that is that is guanine actually I'll do the hydrogen bonds in white so you know they are actually there's multiple hydrogen bonds going on here but just to be clear this is m rna and on the right we have dna and this could be happening during transcription this could be happening during during i'm having trouble changing colors This could be happening during transcription. Now, what are the types of RNAs out there? We've talked about this in other videos. Well, you have messenger RNA, which is an important role in taking information from DNA and, and, and getting it eventually translated with the help of TNR, tRNAs and ribosomes. And though I've just, I've just mentioned another type of RNA, and that's transfer RNA. So transfer RNA, T, tRNA, tRNA. And in the video, the overview video on transcription and translation, we talk about how tRNA does this, but it brings amino acids 
it, it, it has amino acids attached at one end, and then it has anticodons on, on the other end that, that essentially pair, that pair with, with codon fragment or, or, or codons on the mRNA, and then that allows it to construct proteins. And this actually is, is this right over here is a, is a visualization of a tr, tRNA, tRNA. Molecule. So a lot of times when we think about when we think about DNA, we think about okay, mR, uh, mRNA or RNA is an intermediary to be able to eventually translate it into proteins, and that is often the case. But sometimes you also just want the the RNA itself. The RNA itself plays a role in the cell beyond just transmitting information, and that's an example here with the tRNA. And you can see kind of its interesting configuration. Where the amino acid will attach roughly in that area up there, and then you see the anticodon, the anticodon right down here in the bottom right. And different tRNA molecules will attach to different amino acids, and they'll have different anticodons here. So this is another use for RNA, and then others include ribosomal RNA, ribosomal. RNA, and they actually play a structural role in ribosomes, which is, which is where translation occurs. And you also have things called microRNA, microRNA, which are short, which are short chains of RNA, which could be used to regulate the, the, trans, the, the translation of other RNA molecules. So RNA, you know, DNA gets a lot of the attention, but RNA is really, really, really important. And a lot of people believe that RNA came first, and it's potential that you know, the first life or pseudo life ever was just self-replicating RNA molecules, and that DNA eventually uh, evolved from RNA, but RNA stuck around because it's still very useful.